Hello everyone. For those of you that are new here, my name is Anna. I am a macrame artist and teacher and welcome everyone to another tutorial. We will see how many more I'll get to film as I am about three weeks away from my due date, but I have the project for today and then two more that I would ideally like to do. So the project today um, is actually for a friend of mine who has approached me and asked me if I could make, um, I guess I will call it like a hairpin holder, um, hair clip holder, something like that. And I mean, you've seen the thumbnail, so hopefully you know um, what the final product looks like. Um, but basically it's gonna be a couple of rings. I'm gonna do three different ones, then each with like a, um, a piece of macrame on it, and then the hair clips are gonna pin into those macrame pieces. That's the idea. And she wants it for her girls, so it's kind of a kid project, not a baby one yet, although I have come up with one that I want to do, so you just might see that next. So for the project today, what I'm gonna be using are these wooden rings. So I've got three of them. They are about six centimeters wide, and you can see they are pretty thick. Um, I think I would prefer if they were a little bit thinner just so that it's like that there is more room to fit all of the cords in here, but these will do just fine, I'm sure. And then for the cord, I will be using this natural colored three millimeter single twist cord. Now, the reason why I'm using a three millimeter instead of my usual five millimeter is because of... Um, I guess practicality, but also the design. The idea I had is that the macrame strips or whatever I want to call them, like they should be relatively thin so that the hair clips can easily clip onto them. Like I, I was thinking that if I was using the five millimeter and knotting the cords, you know, the cords are not just gonna be hanging, they will have the knots, which does make the whole thing a little bit thicker, I think, then it may not be as functional in the end. Like it might be too thick and the hair pins might get somehow damaged or something if I would try to pin them to it. So that was one of the reasons. And then the other is as well, because the rings are that thick and you know there's gonna be a relatively thin piece of macrame, in order for me to make any kind of like really visible design on it or something, I do need to be able to fit relatively uh, like a lot of cords onto it. So again, if I was using the five millimeter instead, the thicker ones, I would fit probably like two or three of the cords on the ring, which would very much limit me in the how, how much of a design I can make. Whereas if I'm using something thinner, like the three millimeter here, that means I can put more cords on, which means I can make more of a design. I hope that makes sense. Um, maybe we'll see that as I go through the different pieces. And that is it for the supplies, a pretty simple list. So let's get into the first design. So the setup for the first one is the following. I've attached the ring with just some piece of tape. You probably can't see it from this far away. If you don't have a clothing rack, you don't have to worry. I'm sure that you can find a way how you can attach this somehow to like a flat surface or something and you know put it on your table and and work on it that way or just figure out something else um this the clothing rack is definitely not a must for this one but it's the easiest for me to do so i am going to use it and then i've also cut six of the cords that i'm now going to attach all with the regular lark's head knot and then the first design is super simple with just square knots. So alternating rows, the first one is gonna have three, then two, three, two, so on until I get to the final length. So I'm all ready to go here. Last thing to do, put on Downton Abbey on the TV, which I started rewatching yesterday again. I don't think I've ever seen all of the episodes. So again, we'll see if I will manage <laughs> to watch all of it before the baby comes. So let's get into it. Take it all in 
So I think I'm done with all the square knots. From the top here, the ring, to down here, it's about 40 centimeters. And you can see down here, hopefully, that I've made it into a little triangle. So basically there is a row of three, a row of two square knots, and then just one. So what I'm going to do now is take a much shorter piece of the same cord, make a gathering knot at the bottom here, then cut off maybe something like this, cut it off there, and then probably brush it out since this is single twist, so I think it will be nice to have that fringe at the bottom. So let me show you the gathering knot, which is a bit trickier. So here I've got the extra cord. I'll take it and hold it to the back of all these square knots. Then I'm going to make a little loop from it down here, hold that down, together with the other piece of the cord and then start wrapping the longer part around all of these cords. I'm trying to make it nice and tight. Okay, I think this looks good. That's five loops. So now I'll find wherever I left that, pull the rest of the long cord through the loop, and then pull on the shorter edge at the top, the shorter side, so that the long cord gets pulled underneath all those wraps that we just made. And that makes it really, really tight and really safe. Okay, and that's it. Now I can cut this piece. The other one I'm just going to brush out with the rest of the cords. First one done, off to the next one. So for this one, I've again used the regular Lark's head knot to put up all the cords, this time just five of them. And I will be doing a diamond pattern from the double half hitch knot with a little like braided section in the middle. So let me show you all of that. So these two cords in the middle are going to become my travel cords and then all these four are going to put the double half hitch knots onto them. So let's start on the right, forming the two loops of the double half hitch knot. And just like that, putting on the other three as well. And now I'll just repeat the same thing going the other side. So now I'm going to do the other half of the diamond, again keeping the same travel cords and putting all of these cords on it. However, I will have to braid them first. So I'm taking the first cord at the very top on the left, putting it over the first one on the right, then under the next one, over the next one, and again under this one. 
And only now I am going to put it on the travel cord with the double half hitch knot. Like that. All right, let's do the other side next. So this one is already under there, then over the next one, under this one, over this one, and with the double half hitch knot onto the travel cord. So we're done with the top cords. Now moving on to the second in place. And again, doing that braiding so that it's the opposite of what the cord above it was doing before. Okay, and the second cord from the top on the other side. And to finish it off down here, I'm using the left cord to be my travel cord and the right travel cord is going to make a double half hitch over it. And that's it. I hope this was clearer and understandable. And now you just repeat the same process. So the travel cords first, you put on four double half hitches on each side and then down here, doing the same woven pattern like up here. Here we are, I've made six of those diamond shapes and now it's gonna be the same as with the first one. So a gathering knot at the end here, then cut off the fringe and brush it out. Last ring is up. Cords are attached with the regular Lark's head knot. Again, this time I've gone down to four and I'll be doing a pattern I saw on Pinterest that I think is used for like the straps of handbags and things like that, which I think is going to work really nicely here. Basically it's half square knots all the way through, but let me show you how exactly to do that. 
Okay, so we'll start in the middle where it's pretty straightforward. It's literally just that half of the square knot and that's it. But now for the sides, it's a little bit trickier. So let's do the right one. So what you need to do first is take the outermost most cord, bring it over the one next to it, and then you do the half square knot starting from the right. So the outermost cord now is starting and does that half square knot. Just like that. And then we do the other side the same way. So again, the outermost cord crosses over the one next to it. And then that cord, which is now on the side, starts the square knot. And tighten. And now we repeat the whole thing. So in the middle first, just that half square knot. And then on the side, cross over first and then half square knot. Like that, and on the other side, cross over and half a square knot. And we just keep going. done as well. I finished it the same way as the others with a gathering knot and then a brushed out fringe at the bottom. It's about 35 centimeters the whole thing so that these are all just slightly different in the lengths. I think that that will just look good if they hang next to each other like that. And that is it for today's tutorial. I hope to see you in the next one. Bye! Oh,